My name's Chloe Hayden, I'm 23 years old. I'm autistic and have ADHD. I've been working as an advocate and an influencer for autism, mental health and disabilities since I was 16 years old. I started it originally to give the younger version of me a voice. I didn't see anyone like me growing up in media. I didn't see anyone that I could turn to and be like, I don't know who I am. Here's someone who can tell me what that is. When I realised that there was so many other kids out there, there were so many other people out there who also weren't getting that representation, I realised, well, no one else is doing it, so maybe it's my job. I think the biggest thing is having an understanding of my mind and having an understanding of my limits and when I need to take breaks. I think that's the biggest thing and something that so many of us neglect within our self-care routine. Understand that our mental health is such an important thing and we put so much force onto academics, exams and stuff, but our mental health is the biggest and most important thing, especially when you're neurodivergent, especially in high school. The biggest thing that I would do is I would make sure that I would take these breaks. If I could feel myself starting to get overwhelmed, then I would go, okay, it's, it's time to take a break. So before I would do my schoolwork, I would make sure to do things to regulate myself. I would go out to my horses. I would write music. I would draw. I would paint. I get so stuck into my mindset of I have to do all the jobs. Here's my to-do list in my head and I have to tick it off and I can't break until I've done the to-do list. That's how you get burned out and that's how you get run down and that's how you can really, really hurt yourself. I think the biggest thing that I could have told 13 year old me is to have an understanding that who you are is exactly who you're supposed to be. I grew up for my entire life thinking that because I was different, I was weird and I was unworthy and that I wasn't needed here. That couldn't be further from the truth. One day you're going to move mountains and you're going to do amazing, not by fitting in, but because of your differences. My whole life would have changed and I think it's so important that kids growing up now know that their differences are so incredible and that fitting in, you were born to be different, you were born to be an individual. When you're 13 years old, you feel like your school is the most important thing in the world and you feel like your whole world and your whole life revolves around this tiny bubble that school is in. The world is so much bigger than that. There are so many incredible, amazing people out there who may understand you a lot more than just the people that are in your classroom. If you get into your hobbies, you find your special interests, you find your eye sparkles, you find these things that you love, you're going to find so many more people who you are going to understand better and who are going to make sense to you. I could never find friends in school. The only friends I ever found were friends that I made when I wasn't being myself, when I was pretending to be someone else. I think the most important thing is understanding that we do have barriers for a reason. Our minds have told us, hey, these things are uncomfortable. I don't enjoy this. Let's step back a bit so we can protect ourselves. That's an important thing that we need to understand. But it is also important to understand that sometimes these barriers aren't firm brick walls. Sometimes they are things that we are able to push and move and maneuver. I was so scared for the longest time. I was partially mute until I was 16. I could not leave the house by myself. I couldn't even go into Safeway because I was so terrified of everyone there. I had pushed up these walls and these barriers so high that I was positive I was locked inside of them and that I would never get out of them. I was comfortable with that. And then my favorite band was coming into Melbourne. This thing was so important to me that I was like, well, maybe these walls aren't so high and maybe I am able to climb up them. I took myself to Melbourne for the first time and I had the best time of my life and I met people there and I met friends. Maybe all I needed to do was proof to myself that I had the ability to do this. You're allowed to have baby steps and you're allowed to have times where you go out and think you can do something and then go, actually, that was a bit much. I have to take it back again. Now, I had been taught for a really long time that my voice wasn't important and that it didn't matter. I didn't really know how to have a voice. And I would watch these Disney movies and I would look at these, these Disney princesses who were so bold and so powerful and so openly themselves and everything that I wanted to be but, but couldn't be. And when I was 16, my hyperfixation was frozen. Anytime I would put on this character's costume and the wig and the makeup, I wasn't this timid, scared little girl anymore. I was, I was Anna and I was this character who was bold and fun and loud and, and able to be herself without fear of what other people thought of her. I loved who I was when I was in this costume. And eventually I came to the realization that I didn't need the wig and the, and the costume and the big fancy eyelashes to be who I wanted to be. I realized that if this is who I could be while in disguise, there is no reason that I couldn't be this person out of it. Strangely, Disney and, and princesses and dressing up was a massive, massive part of learning what my identity was, which is really cool.